Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Beginning with the name of Allah, the most gracious and merciful. We welcome uh, our brother Dr. Hani al uh, And we are truly honored to have him here to say a few words uh, for, for welcome. I would like to request Brother Shanavas, Khan, our head of programs, to welcome Brother Hani and uh, and uh, our brother, Dr. Ghazi. Uh, before I hand over the floor to brother, Dr. Hani al uh, you all are requested if you can just quickly introduce yourself with your names and with your positions, <coughs> and since how long you are working with, uh, with this uh, organization here in Iraq. So I can start with myself, uh, Zahid Hussain Jalbani, <coughs> country director. Uh, I started last year October uh, 2022. Thank you. So my name is Shalwaz Khan. I started with Iraq as head of program in October 2022. Before this, I was working with Islamic Relief Malawi for one year. And I worked with Islamic Relief Pakistan and Muslim in 2000. I'm Mr. Jair finance officer. And I worked with Islamic Relief since 2010, but in a different period. But now it's been about seven to eight years. Omar mm -hmm. so. uh, Al-Bashar, uh, OCW and FSL coordinator. Uh, it's my, I'm entering the third month joining uh, Islamic Relief Iraq. And Arman Khafaf, Sarman Khafaf. I'm joining the family since 2014. Uh, and now my position is the uh, employment I'm Ali Jassim, a project coordinator based in the Ali oh. uh, I joined Islamic Relief uh, since November 2020. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. 22. My name is Ayan. I'm a commissioned officer. I work with Islamic Relief since this year. My name is Rajin, I'm a recruitment intern. I just joined Amun. Intern. Uh, my name is Hayat, I'm HR coordinator. I've been working with uh, uh, Islamic Relief Iraq since February last year. Very good. Uh, I'm Fatima Saeed, also I've been with Islamic Relief one year. One year. Uh, my name is Jivan Jamil. Uh, I'm working with Islam Relief Science 15 January 2017. Oh. And then now. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Ayub Ahmad, uh, seasonal project coordinator. I started with Islamic Relief since 2018. Started like uh, Kakuk head of office. And after we closed the Kakuk head of office, I started in country office like seasonal project coordinator. I'm Ala Jamil, uh, admin liaison officer. Uh, I started with Islamic Relief since February this year, so I'm entering seventh month. Thank you very much. We have a couple of colleagues online, if they can also introduce uh, themselves. <coughs> yes, Montasar, please. Arab Nasser. Uh, Montasar Madrid, project support officer on board, Ahmed Belirat al Islamia, Minsan al Girotash. Muruj? Sister Muruj? Okay. Thank you very much. Montasir is, is based in, uh, in Ambar. Ambar, yeah. yeah and uh, Muruj, she is working with us as an orphan child welfare uh, sponsorship program officer, and she is based in Baghdad. Yes. Uh, we have another colleague, he's not around Frost. Uh, he's also based in, in Baghdad. He's a under orphan sponsorship program. A couple of colleagues in the country office, they are not able to make it. One of them is Sikh. She is the meal coordinator. Her name is Tawan. And uh, yeah, so this is the, the Simal team. We are resuming back, Alhamdulillah, our operations, and inshallah, with the passage of time, we will grow. So, over to you, Brother Dr. Ghazi. If you can please introduce yourself, no, then we will hand over to Brother. Uh, Dr. Hanif. 
Thank you, Dr. Zaid. Uh, this is uh, Ghazi. I'm uh, working with MIAD. MIAD is a French organization, uh, the HQ office in Paris, but has a mission here in Erbil to work inside Syria and northeast of Syria and also inside Kurdistan Iraq. So it's my pleasure and honor to be accompanying our master, Dr. Hani, our professor. And it's also my pleasure to be with you with a great school, Islamic Relief. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all of you. Now the floor is over to you, uh, Dr. Ani. Uh, yeah, so. Alhamdulillah, wa sallam wa Shukran, thank you for asking me to come back to be with you. Alhamdulillah, quite a few of you are new ones. And this is a great honor. And I've got quite a few sisters amongst you, which is another good sign. Young people, another good sign as well. English or not? English? Yes, I think English is. This was our agreement. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Make it English. Uh, alhamdulillah, to see good old friends, inshallah for three or four of you. And alhamdulillah to see another new good friends like you and others. And uh, for me, my visit has a different mission because I don't connect myself anymore to one organization. And this is different between implementing agencies like Islamic League, which is a great organization, and coordinating agencies like uh, Humanitarian Forum, Muslim Charities Forum, or World Humanitarian Action Forum, where I started, or Islamic League produced me. And those organizations are byproducts of Islamic League, whether we like it or not. Because all of them were developed when I was at Islamic League. And this is where you try to find a role for you. The more time you give yourself to you grow, the more time you give yourself to develop yourself, the more time you give yourself to have an impact on society, the more time you give yourself the time to start making social change in the society. Nothing is happening over night. We are not living in the miracle time. Nothing. There is no miracles after that. After the Prophet. The only existing miracle is Quran. The Quran. The living miracle is Quran. But we all have to keep climbing the ladder. The more we climb, or the more we develop ourselves, the more we have the ability to climb to higher places. And the more we'll be elevated by our society and our community. And the more will be recognized by everyone. And the more will become the leader. And we cannot afford, we cannot afford to see you not becoming leaders. No way, we'll get it. No way. The people who lead are far more less than anyone of you. But they lead. Because there are space and they think. We have to learn to develop ourselves, to climb with the challenge, because our role is to lead with dignity and integrity. لأننا لابد أن نصبح قادة ورواد 
that killed the said in English. Ah, ah, one of the criteria or characteristics of the leadership, to become a leader, is to show humility to people. And to know your history. And the history of your organization. Especially for the young people who started recently. They have to know to whom they belong. We all belong to Allah. But structurally, institutionally, we should belong to an organization or institution. Like Islamic Relief or other organizations. لابد أن ننتمي لشيء أو نصنع شيء Don't think that Islamic leaf started by a pioneer this waste of time by innovative individual this waste of time by some people who are outstanding, this waste of time. And this is defeating yourself. You want to become a defeatist. You want to defeat yourself, become a defeatist? Link your achievement of organization to somebody who are outstanding, who are pioneers, whom they don't exist anymore. This is wrong. Absolutely wrong. You will never move an inch. Because all the time you move an inch, said, no, I cannot do it. Because he is brilliant, pioneer, innovative. الإبداع جزء من الإصرار. Innovation is a part of determination. Success is a part of trials. Achievement is a part of commitment. Pioneering is a part of keeping trying all the time. We try, we fail, we try, we fail, we try, we fail, till we get the Nobel Peace Prize. That's achievement. No difference between you and the winners of Nobel Peace Prize. None. They have two brains? No. They have four legs? No. They have six eyes? No. They're like you, like me. But they tried the experiment 1,000 times. And they did not stop till they succeeded. And when they succeeded, they achieved their objectives. When they achieved the objectives, they made the change. صح. وكلكم, all of you, مبدعون. And the all of you, all of you, all of you, and the Pioneering. What is the term? Pioneer. Huh? Pioneer. Pioneering. All of you, all of us, have to teach our children that we are you are pioneers. You are gifted. You are credible individual. You can make a change from the age. When your baby comes out of your womb and starts to listen to your teaching at the age of four and five to give them the confidence. Abdullah ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet started to learn at the age of three from his auntie, which is Aisha, and the others. And started to give fatwa at the age of 15 or 14 or 15. Fatwa in the middle of Medina. And great companions used to listen to his teaching when he was 14, 15. Now I've been told our young children are teenagers. They are not suitable yet. 
they are not just ready. This is a defeatist ideology. The fiqh in his army اجعلك تتحدث مع الطفل الموهوب وكأنه ليس ليس له قيمة. This defeatist ideology make you to deal with a gifted child as if he is nothing. When the Kalim Yemen or two discussing yesterday, yesterday, or every day for yesterday, how the Prime Minister of Singapore considered that every born child is gifted child. We have to invest in him and her. كل مولود موهوب وهذا يتطابق 180 درجة مع القرآن. And this goes hand in hand, hand in each degree with Quran. كرمنا بني آدم كرمنا بني آدم We dignify the children of Adam because they become the custodian of the universe. The custodianship is given to the people who are gifted, pioneers, innovative, and talented. And all of you, no human being on earth does not have all this. And when we come back, when we come back, I think it's the president. Okay. 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 Then the Rabbin had to put it in the heart and the mind of people. فحذاري ثم حذاري ثم حذاري أن نعتقد أن هناك ناس أحسن منا كلنا سواسير. Be careful to think that those people are better than you. We're all equal. That's all. To those who don't know the history of Islamic belief, it's extremely simple, diverse, and effective. The simplicity is just a start. There's no planning, no budget, no strategy, no big names. That's simplicity. Diverse. It accommodated the young people from the very early days. You know our fun? Our fun, our fun, you know our fun? Fun Shimon. Yes. He started as a volunteer when he was in the university, Islamic League Games. Nowadays, our fun is the head of the division. First field visit to our fun was here. Baghdad, 1996. Me and him, in summer of 96. This is his first field visit ever. And when he comes here, he will tell you what I have done to him. I have roasted him. Grilled him, shawaitu, kawaitu, galaitu, wa'allatu. I hanged him, I roasted him, I grilled him, I burned him. Then I debond him with a lot of Adam and Lahm. Well, I came to Pasha. Pasha. I told him. Pasha. 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 And ears. Yeah. The crunch, I said that. Yeah. I think the crunchy ears. Yeah. <laughs> we call the eyes gawah and jewels. In Egypt, we eat everything. And Afal will tell you his first experience in the field visit. One day he said, we were, we were living in Rashid Hotel. You know how much was every day? 
Six dollars. Six dollars every day. And I was sitting down the stairs in the reception, speaking to Japanese coming from Japan, from Jaipa. And they opened the room, both of us were in the same room. This was in July. And they woke him up. He said, Afan, Afan, Afan. He said, What? Yeah, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. This man is from Japan. Sit down with him. He looked at me and I said, I'm crazy. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, get me some money from the, from the street, tell me this Japanese. Next time I come to this Pasha. Pasha or Pasha? Pasha. 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 <laughs> he looked at it and he was, oh my God, I can't. I, because in the, in the morning. Then I decided to give him another meal. I went to Yamal Sham, a uh, butcher. Sarah uh, Mansour, Mansour Street, and they prepared the tray with everything. But when he looked at Afan, he said, This man will be able to eat this. <laughs> because they had got every tray, just feed him. And they were trying to save a few thousand uh, dinar, which for the breakfast. First time, no breakfast. Second day, no breakfast. Third day, he sat down and said, listen, I'm not going to move out without having my breakfast. You go. And they were trying to convince him not to eat, to save the 5,000. Then now we should need five dollars. Five They're not going to move. I have to listen to him. I finally say to you. <laughs> OK. This was our first visit to Iraq. Very painful, but very eye-opening. So, simplicity, diversity is when you involve young people with you from the very beginning. Affan, Anwar Khan, Jangir, Shaheen, Sikandra Ali, uh, then uh, this, is the, this is the generation of the 80s. Then you involve uh, Salah Saeed, involve Mustafa Osman, involve Harun Atallah. This is a part of the generation of the 90s. Then you involve women for the diversity. This is simplicity, diversity, and effectiveness. We were the best ever organization making a quick response to any disaster anywhere on earth. We were before anybody. Anybody and everybody. In Bosnia, were there before the conflict. This was 1991. I was in Albania. The conflict happened in 1992. Albania visited 1991. But to have people to tell us what's happening in Bosnia. And Chechnya was there. Two, two wars in Chechnya. One in 1990, December 1994, one in 1999. And both of them. And we were ahead of everybody. And everybody else could not be able to go there. Especially in 1991. We don't have any budget. Only $10,000. But when we sat down together, Muhammad uh, Ala and myself, Muhammad Ala was the country representative and myself, we increased the budget from 10,000 to 100,000. That was in November 1999. Then when we went to Grozny and came back, we saw the full program like water, sanitation, health, education, transportation, everything, we put another zero. This was the vision came. Said, can we go for some million? Said, no way. No way. You know how much we spent in the first three years? Maybe from 2000, and the, no, after three, four months, not the first three years. After three months of our visit, 
I spent three million dollars from ten thousand dollars. Why? Because we took the risk. أننا أخذنا المخاطرة ودخلنا وأخذنا الصور التي لم يأخذها أحد. We took the risk to be inside Grozny, to see the hospitals, to see the amount of destruction, to see the displacement of the train, displaced people, Sputnik camps. We go back to the Google, Sputnik camps. All family in one compartment in a, in a, in a, in a train, in the middle of a snowing area. Because we took the risk. By March, April 2000, we spent about $3 million from $10,000. The office of Muhammad Ali at the time, you know what was it? You know what was it? The office. He used to live in a studio flat, him and his wife, and the corridor where the desk was. And the maktab came from the Torah, from the Salah, the corridor, facing the toilet and the kitchen and the door. And my bedroom, what was him in his bedroom with his wife, was the office. And he was sleeping with his wife in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Where did they sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Not with them, of course. <laughs> And the corridor. Next to what? Next to the toilet and the kitchen. But then I'm the hammam. I'm the mabbach. I'm the bath. That's the shakla of time. This was actually how we started the session. Then we moved from the $10,000 to the millions of dollars. This is the effectiveness of this stage means that we managed to take the risk when nobody else took it. We managed to attract people. Even we used to refuse people ex not our, Not our style. So what? You're pure, so what? You'd be like a product on a conveyor belt. We don't want to. This is effectiveness. We have people of high caliber. Took simplicity, diversity, and the effectiveness. And keep producing those people all the time. So we depended on the society, the income from the society. Local organ local community. In UK and in Paris, and so in France and Belgium, Holland, USA, and others who are not actually looking eagerly for international funding. It came later because they recognized our credibility, so they gave us the money. This is how we started. We are very transparent in a way. Some organizations say that we have no admin cost, we say we have admin. We have admin cost. Nothing is without admin cost. That's why people give to the people who are more transparent and more honest. Not people who are trying to convince me and fool me of zero admin cost. This is how we start. Uh, now I will keep the floor open for you. Ask me any questions that you want. I'll take one first. I'm going to take them. Let's do Matt Ashaw. Shall Matt Ashaw. Matt Ashaw. Last time you said that you start on 18, 1983. 83, 84. 84 is in UK. Yes, yes. 84 in UK. 84 in UK. Yes, anybody else want to uh, ask questions? Fadal. Fadal. Yes, maybe. 
Așa mă să fac mic. Am de la. Just I want to ask what's your advice for our staff here to thinking I mean growing up like making Iraq office better to serve humanity here. Like in, from your experience with many countries that you are visiting. It is invest in people, especially the local staff, because those people will be staying behind. Even if Islamic belief leaves tomorrow, they have to leave people that who are able and they can that they can continue working on the local ground. Our program should empower the local community. Or not just throwing fund to the local community. We should be developing, training, and supporting local community, as well as empowering local organizations. Each one of you, or each one of us, should be an advocate for the organization. To be a fundraiser for the organization. We were just talking about it in Mehad uh, an hour ago, and even this morning there was human appeal. About each one of us has a role to grow his or her organization. Not only way for the idea to come from the country director, or to come from UK, or to come from France, or to come from USA. No, the idea is local. The solution is local. The development is local. The achievement is local. Go to Afghanistan, highly talented people. Why should I ignore them? Everywhere, they have all, all these wealth of knowledge, experience, zeal, spirit, vision, and direction. So this is what we need to uh, invest in, invest in, in Iraq or any other country. Doctor. Any other questions, uh, comments? We have some colleagues online also. If uh, Omar Mustafa, Sister Muruj, and uh, Montasir, if you have any questions, you are welcome. You can even ask in, in Arabic as well. I like to ask in Arabic. They are both in the express. Nafir al Humar, for example, fundraising. I see our society. ناس كثيرة يعني تدفع للأيتام يعني بس بشكل يعني عشوائي فهذه المنظمات المفروض إنها يعني تأثر على الحكومات أو تغير القوانين مع حتى يقدر يأخذ المبالغ هذه أو يأخذ التبرعات هذه من الأشخاص فأول شيء هو هذه ثاني شيء هو الثقة بالمنظمة أنا متأكد إن الإدارة الإسلامية أكو ثقة فيها يعني بس يمكن القوانين مع البلد ما يقدر إحنا مثلاً كعراق ما نقدر مثلاً نستلم مبالغ أو نستلم حبات أو تبرعات من السيفيوس يعني من الشعب. نعم. He said how can we make an impact on the local government? This is very important that you know. One organization will never be able to make any impact, even if it has big budget. Organizations' impact is where the collective, the collective which are the group organization. They create forum, they create platforms, they create coalition 
of 30, 40, 50 organizations and make research on a subject on water, sanitation, health, education, women's rights, children's rights. Here, this documentation will be very powerful because it's being represented by 50 or 40 or 100 organizations. And goes from government to government. But Islamic League by itself, or Muslim Aid, or Muslim Hands, or Red Crescent, cannot, as one individual organization, make the impact that you want. لا بد علينا من خلق أو إيجاد مظلات تستطيع أن تؤثر على قرار الحكومة وتغير السياسة. بس نمر واحد. ااا ذا ذا الجزء الثاني سؤال كان إيه؟ كان عندنا ناس يتبرعون بالآلاف بالملايين دولارات لأغراض الأيتام والفقراء وهذه بس هي تروح بشو بصورة غير متوازنة. نعم. This is second point is People are only very traditional in their donation. And do you know the, pro the, 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 the projects? Orphan sponsorship, will sponsorship, Kurbani, Ramadan, food, food basket, everything. We cannot stop them. That's not often. But we have to create other uh, diverse direction for the donor to donate. What do you want them for? People don't understand training. People don't understand research. People don't understand advocacy. They don't. Either we have to convince some of them on one-to-one -one places to get a budget, or we have to do the projects which help us such as microfinance, livelihood, and relate all our projects to community development. And put all your dreams inside a project that everybody can donate money for. يعني التركيز المجتمعي لعائلات وانت بقى تعلم كل عائلة and you educate every family. Is that right, brother? Shanaz? What's the name? Not Shana. Shana is a woman, sorry. Shana was. I'm sorry. I've got two Shana was. One was in Sudan, was Islamic League, the other second Shana was. He is in Pakistan. Yeah. So, see what is the project that they like, Mashar Bihabu, Udakhal Fi, and put inside it the components that you want them to do. But you have to do all your projects based on research. You have to have a budget, of your own budget for research. Whether we like it or not. The Islamic organization, unfortunately, is, is, is led by the traditional donors. The other organizations are mainly led by the government funding. That's why sometimes they come with advocacy, with advocacy for their purpose. And in Munasr Abdo, in Munasr to Haqq Qadaf. Thank you. During one of your five statements that you said uh, in Malaysia, uh, have there any opportunity for any uh, spot where Islamic relief or the angel that you are uh, overseeing can support the United people and in, in respective countries. For example, in some countries there are very smart peoples. Uh, can we tend to like push them more forward to bring them on the real stage? What do you mean? By, the, I mean, supporting innovation. Ah, yes. I think uh, if you have educational program, you have to be selective later on. Some of the organization which I met with them or the help from them, they pick up the talented individual and send them for higher education somewhere. You have the right to do that. 
I think when I was in uh, Turkey last week, on Friday there was recognition of the achievement of the talented young Yemeni who are inventing drone, inventing some uh, devices to discover mines, uh, and there were seven of them being sponsored by the government, as a, by the organization, and most of them either undergraduate or postgraduate. I saw this happen in Yemen. Maybe the organization here can do the same. Maybe Islam Khalif in his program might be guided by one of those young people who could be later on making the church. And this could come through the orphan sponsorship program. Because with the, orphans, with the orphan sponsorship program, you work close to the orphan and mother and you know the status of the church. Yes? Anyone? Yes, Ali. Yes, yes. Thank you. So I'm just asking about what is the level of consideration for the Iraq, the programs in Iraq. Specifically, now we just started uh, intervention for climate change uh, in the South. So I just want to take idea. What is the level of consideration in the HFU for the Iraq program in the upcoming years? <laughs> <laughs> I left HQ a few years ago. Uh, okay. So, uh, Ali, 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 if, if you tell me from outside, before he give you the, the, the right pictures, gender, advocacy. Yeah, about the official strategy. Oh. I, I'm asking your, uh, ah, my, my your opinion and your vision. Oh, too. but this has, this has nothing to do with Islamic Cliff. <laughs> yeah, he said Islamic Cliff for Iraq. Yeah. I think for Iraq, Iraq is not a poor country. And all the countries, Pakistan not a poor country. Bangladesh not a poor country. India not a poor country. Sudan not a poor country, Egypt not a poor country, Malawi, Mali not a poor country. Country that is full of resources, but the indigenous people or the local community do not understand that they are rich enough. One of the most important things that you can do to any community is to let them to believe that they can become rich. To let them to believe that they can develop themselves. Let them to believe that they can be empowered and can become leader of the humanity. This is your role. Because you have the knowledge, you have the budget, you have the vision, and you have the platform. People do not realize what they have. In the case of Syria, in the case of Syria, I tell you, North East Syria. What's there? There are a lot of people who try to to the Syrian the petrol and the the bank of wheat. 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 اللي احنا مش عارفين نجيبه الا من حته واحده ويت ذا فارم اند اولسو از يو نو اندر ذا جراوند تو هاف ذا بيت اويل 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 دي مور ذان يو اف يو ويل هاف ذا اوبورتونيتي تو كروس ذا بوردر فروم فيش خابو قامشلي تو حسكه تو الركا اول ذيس كيلومترز يو ويل سي a lot of those machines for oil, yeah. which is in each city, uh, something, uh, some of them are uh, manual, some of them are very old, but every time it's giving dollars, you know, yeah. $10,000, I don't know how much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and also the wheat, mashallah, last time it was one and a half feet, and a, a very wide square of this wheat, and also oil. But still, uh, people are covered. Yeah, and yeah, suffering. yeah. Sure. Yeah, these resources are there. In Bang and in, in what? Pakistan. Not Pakistan. Pakistan. The, 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 the one next to Pakistan. What's the big the Taliban? Taliban. Taliban. Afghanistan. Afghanistan. They're rich, but they don't know that they are rich. Faudur Nahna, our duty as an international organization to tell you that you are a rich country and to believe that you become richer if you be able to discover your own resources. This is a challenge. This is a challenge. You want to send them the message of Islam? Yes, uh, uh, Ali, in response to your question, I mean, uh, what is the consideration? Uh, this was the question of. Uh, uh, so there is, there is no I mean, question that uh, the Iraq is not into consideration or not into the priority of HQ. It is, in fact, but uh, it all depends uh, to each one of us, every one of us, that how we are going to take forward uh, the program uh, and how we are going to make uh, an impact, a positive impact on the lives of the people of this country. Um, the right holders, I mean our light right holders, how we are going to make a positive impact into into their lives. It, it all depends on each each one of us because we are the we are the pillars. We are the part of, of this program. We have to take forward the things. So yes, I'm sure. I mean, as a team, we will we will take it forward, inshallah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, in, in regard to the uh, the study of, of nations and countries, there is no. Where are from? From where are you from? I'm from the Hook. The Hook? You speak English like Iranian. Like Iranian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, for that, for that. Uh, okay. uh, there is no four countries. Yes, sir. Uh, there is no half. Uh, there is a misuse of resources. This is quite a clear global phenomenon. Uh, what we tell people about if they are rich or not, uh, probably, maybe we could work on the level of uh, We were given some examples two days ago in Dahuk about countries that came out of post-World War II of conflict like Rwanda, of poverty like Malaysia and like Singapore and managed to move up. 
countries did not have resources, country have resources. The challenge here is you have to have a stable government to start with you. You have to have a stable government to stand with you, with the people. This was happened in Rwanda, in Malaysia, in Singapore. They took the country to a different level. The second point was they will be able to give a, a, a good civil level space to every citizen. This talk is in Arabic. I can pass it, I can pass it to you. And you can. He was attending the meeting. Yeah. All those countries stood up on their feet because they made a stable government. You have to fight corruption. Harabat Fasad in our union. If you look at the case of Lebanon, it's very serious. Very, very serious. Lebanon is just a country. You tell me that Lebanon is not resourceful? I tell you, you're mind wrong. You know something called blue economy? The blue economy. Blue economy. The, the economy of the sea, which you get raised ah, on. Blue. blue, blue economy. See how long with the seaside of, 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 uh, of Lebanon? See how long with the seaside of Somalia? See how long with the seaside of Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria? How long with the seaside of Saudi Arabia? Or even in Yemen? Or even Kuwait and Bahrain? And Emirates? Some of them are poor countries, some of them are rich countries, but they are not developing. Why? You need to have stable government with vision and strategy. As those five countries mentioned, they managed to do this. Managed to do this. It took them over 20, 30, 40 years. The Germans started 45 with the Japanese but started by respecting the German citizen and giving him and her the dignity and the credibility. So stable, a stable government, good governance, stable government, good governance, as well as uh, good governance, stable government, good governance, education. I will keep fighting corruption. Education. All these five countries invest heavily in education. Relate advancement and development of the country with the amount, with the budget of education. And certain countries, the educational budget is 2% of the national budget. Education. All of them use the education. You will talk them out from poverty. But the system. Even look at the, without support, without actually talking too much about Turkey, what the economy of Turkey was, now it's going down again because of the international financial problem. But five, six, seven years before that was actually a far more better situation. Look at your relationship with the borrowing. Borrowing from World Bank or from International Monetary Fund with the condition on you and the nation to pay back. All this, and you cannot just live in a dream and say, I cannot do it tomorrow, you can't do it. Today. No, you can't do it unless you have, unless you fought corruption and you have a civil government and have freedom for civil society, for civil, for civil, liberty, uh, civil liberty and also freedom for civil society. Are some of these countries in the East fighting uh, civil society sector? They don't want it. This is some of what's happening at the moment, but all these countries that I mentioned are rich. Is it clear? It's crystal clear. Huh? It's crystal clear. Ah, boy. What is it?
we are really, we are greatly honored and uh, we we love to have you again and again so this is this is what i i wanted to say thank you uh, shukran jazeela thank you can i say something go ahead so sir i'm just going to say as a person working in humanitarian looking majority of Syria and Turkish humanitarian staff are always envy your positions your work and participation in this great school Islamic Freedom when you look to Mr. Zaid and his team here we look to Dr. Abrahman Aysam in Turkey and his team Mr. Zaid in Canada Islamic Freedom Canada Dr. Tarek in Germany really this is I'm one of those persons. When you meet the persons everywhere in Turkey, in Syria, even inside Syria, in Idlib, in Aleppo, nowadays even inside North East of Syria, everybody envy all of you. They always want to sometimes work with Islamic Relief and to benefit from the school and from the experience of Islamic Relief. So really, we consider all of you as lucky person, and uh, inshallah it will be. Uh, always you are reward, rewarded uh, in your uh, work. كل الناس في سوريا وتركيا بيشتغلوا بالمنظمات بحسوكم بيحسوا كل حدا بيشتغل بالإسلام الفيلي وهي شهادة أنا أشهد بها من خارج الإسلام الفيلي فأخص مراقب خارجي لكن أصدقائنا خلال عشر سنوات عمل في تركيا من أجل شمال غرب سوريا الجميع السوريين الأتراك even some internationals بعض الموظفين الاجانب كانوا دائما يتمنوا انه يشتغلوا في احد البوزيشنات الموجوده ضمن بعثات اسلام الكبير وهذا الشيء شفناه بفريقكم الرائع هون اداره الاستاذ زايد الفريق الرائع مش في تركيا اسلام الكبير تركي دكتور عبد الرحمن عصام فريقه في كندا كان في عندنا فرصه نشتغل مع الشباب اسلام الكبير في كندا الاخوات والاخوه في المنتدى في لندن تحس يو ار سيجنال تو ايتش اذر You are thinking the same way, you have the same approaches, same principles. You, you can see this in other organizations. And even in our organization, MIAD, we have been working since 2012 in Paris. We have three missions in, in Gaza and Erbil, and newly even in Ukraine. But we are struggling how to agree on the identity, values, the vision. But when you look, to your great organization. We hope that really you succeeded to have a clear ID, a clear identity, a clear vision, and a clear mission. Good luck. Thank you very much for such, uh, such uh, words. We are, we are truly honored. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, to close, no, not to close, not to close. I'm always open. <laughs> well, to conclude this come back to point one there was no big figure to start the war nothing no big budget no big fat strategy no big fat mission or vision nothing and what he said started by very simple young people. Most of them, even some of them, like Aflaq, you know Aflaq, uh, Suleiman? He said, we never knew anything called the Tawa, voluntary activity. When Islamic belief came in 1989, and I was a young boy, we all came out from places like uh, in, uh, in Baghdad, Hayy Thawra, not very well-built area, in Baghdad, in Birmingham, 
and we're there 24 7. Age of 18, 19, 20, 20. So, to conclude, an organization which does not have women and young people is either blind or one eyed or limping or killed. You have to have the passion of woman, the emotion of woman, the power of young people and the spirit and the wisdom. You cannot just do it alone by one part of the thing. That's the conclusion. And for you? First? I think I, I already said <laughs> the few words I, I can uh, just, uh, I mean, again, just a couple of words. I mean, as I, in the beginning, as I said, I'm, I'm shot out. Shot out. Iraq team, I always use the word my winning team. My what? Winning team. I see. Okay. Yes, we are one team, we are working together. Our mission is one, our objective is one, our goal is one to serve the underserved, unserved, hard to reach people of the country. Okay. We, will, we, we are working as a one team, we will work as a one team. We are going to make a positive impact in the lives of the people of the country. Inshallah. Inshallah. And uh, we, we are, we are uh, honored to have you here. And we are looking forward to have you again and again here, Inshallah, in, in coming period, coming months, coming years. Uh, may Allah bless you uh, and other, other uh, founder fellows for creating such, such an amazing organization. Uh, Dr. Ghazi, you rightly said, brother, that uh, yes, this is the organization. Honestly, I mean, uh, when you work for this organization, you work from core of heart, from bottom of your heart. When you do something, you feel accomplished through our, our uh, like very small interventions. I mean, Kurbani, Ramadan, Orphan Sponsorship Program. This is something you are doing. Through Kurbani, I mean, you are providing a, like a very small amount of meat to the people they like, maybe they, throughout the year they were not able to have a, a meat before. Mm -hmm. So such things, uh, when you do from your bottom of heart, in return you, you feel a yes, satisfaction. It is not only the money which provides you satisfaction, which we are earning as a salary. It is something. It's something when you do such something from your bottom of it for such people, you feel yes, something is, we, we did something. So, inshallah, as, uh, as I said, we are just resuming back the operations of this, this country office. We are committed. We are one team. We are winning team. We are going to take it forward, inshallah. Shukran Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you.